<laughs> What's going on, guys? This is Gene Jensen, and it is time for another Friday Night Live. All right. Y'all, how's it going? How's the audio? Everything else? I just had to get reset up after being on the road. I hadn't hadn't unpacked anything. But uh, and then it took me a couple of seconds to get things rock and roll over on YouTube. Um, man, oh man, what it's what a fun trip it's been. Um, it's been a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks now. I guess it has been three weeks because I uh, I went to Texas for the to the for the Bass Nation uh, Kayak Championship. I uh, bombed it tremendously. I sucked the first day. I got in my own head which uh, doesn't happen very often, and I didn't even get a bite. But second day, I ran four and a half miles in my kayak to a one spot, caught all my fish in basically a section, of, a, a, a spot about this wide and about 10 feet deep. Uh, one cast, caught all my fish, caught 11 fish, and then left and came back. And uh, did all right. If I'd have done that the first day, I probably would have been pretty good, at least up in the top 20%. It's to the, top, the lower 50, I guess. So, But anyway, it is what it is. Uh, I got to hang out with Greg Blanchard, which was cool. Got to know him a little bit. What a great dude. Uh, if you guys haven't checked out his YouTube channel, do that. Uh, Greg Blanchard is awesome. I love how he films his, his tournaments. I'm horrible at it. I didn't get any of that on film because I get so focused on fishing that I don't even worry about cameras. They just get in the way for me. Um, so anyway, oh, goodness. Let me get everything situated real quick. I'm kind of, I got a sore back. I've been fishing all day. Uh, I know. Sorry. Uh, poor, poor, pitiful me. Um, and, uh, but anyway, it's been pretty good. Uh, been pretty good week. The last couple of days, I finally got a chance to get out and do some fishing. Got caught up on all my yard work. Um, and I caught, if you guys kayak fish, you'll understand when I say this. In the last two days, I've got 112 inches. So a whole bunch of fish over five pounds which is a lot of fun. Really, really a lot of fun. I don't know why my focus is so off. Let me get this thing. There we go. How's that? That's a little better. Uh -uh. All right. We got to change something real quick. Give me just a second. That's better. A little push of a button, a little adjustment with the stand and we're ready to go. Um, Okay, uh, if you guys are joining me on my podcast, welcome. Uh, thanks for listening. I, I mainly record these and throw them on my podcast for you guys who are on the road all the time, so you can sit and listen. But um, it's been a pretty good week. Actually, it hadn't been a very good week. I'm going to talk a little bit about something that's pretty dang sad uh, here. Actually, might as well go ahead and talk about it now. Uh, we About a week ago, matter of fact, it's been a week. Uh, Sam Tolley, you guys know, you guys know him as the guy that donates all the time. He was killed in a, uh, drunk, a DUI accident. He was on his motorcycle, got hit by a drunk driver in Texas. And, uh, and, oh man, um, I just pray for his wife and his family and his, and his daughters. It, it was pretty rough. He was an amazing man. In the short time I got to know him, uh, he was, he had bought 13 kayaks so he could start his own high school, uh, kayak fishing league in his hometown. He's one of those guys that you always would aspire to be if you, you know, if you came across a lot of money, um, his company made a ton of money. He had a lot of extra and he did everything he could possibly do to, uh, to give that money away to, to charity or to help just helping other people, which was absolutely awesome. Um, I just can't, I, I'm still shook up because I found out about it about three days ago. But uh, yeah, pretty, pretty bad. Uh, he was 40 years old, left behind a wife and three daughters, as far as I know. Um, but uh, man, oh man, may he rest in peace. That just sucks. Uh, and I hate talking about that. But um, oh, goodness. It's, you know, if I ever, if this YouTube channel ever blows up or something else ever happens, then that's exactly what I would do with my money. Now, I'm going to try, now don't mark my work, put my words on it, but I'm going to try to continue that idea he had because the kayaks were already purchased as far as I know. Uh, and we're going to try to, to do something with those high school kids that he was working with. Um, but uh, we'll see. It's still in the very, very early, early stages. Uh, so that's something we, it's all just talk right now to be able to do get it done. So don't hold my word, to, uh, you know, don't hold me to it. So goodness gracious. All right. So what else is going on? Um, 
nothing I can talk about this week. We've got some good stuff coming up. Uh, my guest, um, I'm going to have a guest here in a couple of weeks. We we're going to have him next week, but he's in the hospital right now having a whole bunch of tests done. He's doing fine, but he's a good buddy of mine. But man, it's it, all of a sudden he got real sick and had to go to the hospital and get just get tests run. Find out what's going on with him. But uh, you'd think he was an old man, but he's not. It's pretty young. So, goodness. Nate Sparks, thanks, man. Perry Tall, thanks, man. Sam Barnes, thank you, brother. Thank you. Good. Good to have everybody here. All right, let's just jump right into it. Try to get my mind off of the bad stuff, and let's talk about uh, let's talk about fishing. Let's get some Q and A going, and uh, and I'll definitely let his uh, his family know that you guys are all praying for him. That's for them. That's for sure. Uh, do I you still use a small rod for frog fishing? I do, even though thirteen doesn't make one anymore. I have uh, three or four of them that I do use them. That that just it 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 sucks that they don't make it anymore. But I'm going to try to get them to make one at least that's six eight or maybe six ten. That's a frog rod, but who knows? I don't know. I'll talk to them at iCast in a couple of weeks. But uh, goodness gracious, what else is going on? I filmed a really good video this morning on jig fishing. Uh, I hope you guys liked my drop shot video yesterday. I've got, me and Jordan are finally getting to the point where uh, we're filming good together. He just wants to fish so much. That just drives me crazy. We get out there to start filming, and he wants to get done now because he wants to go fishing, and, and you can't always get done right now. So I guess that's the young fisherman in him. So it's just kind of have something I have to be patient with. So have ever, ever fished Lake Darabon in Louisiana? And if so, what would you be using this time of year? I don't think I have. I fished some lake in Louisiana that I don't know the name of. But uh, matter of fact, that picture right there was shot. Whoops, where's that? That one. Shot in a, in a uh, on a lake in Louisiana, but I don't know what the name of it was. We just showed up for a photo shoot and I caught a couple of bass. Um... Let's see. Brandon Jackson, any tips on jig fishing? I'm getting really excited about it and want to make it a, a staple in my arsenal. Dude, wait till I, we launch that video. I should have it ready Sunday or Monday. All depends on whether Jordan gets it edited or not. But uh, it's a pretty good video. And then I'm also going to link to a couple other g jig videos. But the biggest thing is, is you got to be fishing hard bottom or hard cover and structure. Uh, you know, flipping in along brush piles and shaking it and hopping it and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, you definitely got to be doing that. Doug Stubbs, man, thanks for the 50 bucks. This is in Sam's memory. Night tournament, Saturday night from 6 p.m. 6 to 11, dark spinnerbait. Dark spinnerbait, Texas rig with big worms. Dude, I'm st I throw the same thing at, and in the evening as I do during the days, usually a jig or in the summertime, a jig or a worm, maybe in a drop shot if there's like spotted bass in the area and you're fishing a little bit deeper. But uh, spinnerbait will work around docks that have like lights and stuff. But it just there's that lull halfway through that tournament between like 930 and 10 or something like that where you don't get a whole lot bit. You know, a whole lot of bites and you, you I always run to the docks that have lights on. They're usually the first ones to turn on. So thanks for the 50 bucks, man. I appreciate it, man. I really do. Um, see, David Myers tried hollow body frogs, uh, fishing some lily pads. Fish were playing whack-a-mole with my frog, popping it six inches up in the air with a few hookups. Do I need a smaller frog? No, what you need to do is shorten the legs on your frog. Uh, that's usually the trick. And also have a follow-up bait. In other words, have like a floating worm or a Cinco or what I usually do. Well, in my, when I'm in the lily pads and stuff like that, I'll just have some type of a, um, hold on a second. I'll have some type of a creature bait on a Texas rig. Um, I got Jordan bringing me some water. I, I, I usually throw like a rage bug or something on a Texas rig that I can pitch in right there where they blew up. And you can typically catch that fish on a follow-up bait. But if they're doing that a lot, shorten the legs on your frog. They're going after those legs. They, and I'll even shorten them up as, as much as an inch, you know, leave an inch, inch and a half. So that's that's always a good trick. Uh, what's a few ways to catch shallow fish right now? Flipping cover uh, and get in the current. Uh, so anytime, anywhere that, or grass and it, anything that creates oxygen in that hot water. Uh, current is good. Grass is good. Uh, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Um, and, uh, but they're going to be stuck in that cover grass. Grass is most important because it creates oxygen. 
Oh, Hunter, thanks for the 50 bucks, man. He says, in memory of Sam, had a daughter in February, and I can't wait to show her your videos in a few years uh, and educate her and watch her catch your That's awesome, man. That is awesome. Um, watch that video on how to teach kids how to how to fish that me and my wife made several, a few years ago. That it's it gives you some pretty good things to look forward to. It's a it's a really good video. Thanks, man. Thanks for the fifty bucks. Uh, let's see, Andy Middleton. That's a good one. He says Flu a fluke is an awesome follow up for a topwater miss. Yes, it is. My only only concern with is that he was in lily pads. And so you'd really have to put that on something. You could get the fish out of the lily pads. But yeah, it is a really good, I used to throw flukes behind buzz baits and that kind of stuff when we were getting them, they were blowing up on buzz baits and missing them. So, um, I'm looking for Damon to come on. He ain't on yet. I guess when he sees the, uh, sees that I caught 112 inches in the last couple of days, he'll come on. He's in the lead at the tournament we're fishing right now. Hey, Gene, what would you recommend for a beginner uh, who is constantly tying on different rigs? I come to a blank when I get to a lake and seem to tie on a new bait every few minutes. Oh, man. Um, the biggest thing is, and I, the first thing that came to mind when I read that, Cameron, was uh bring two different baits or two one rig and one bait you know like a spinner bait or something like that and then a texas rig or a carolina rig and don't bring anything else force yourself to fish those two have a moving bait and a bait that you can work on the bottom and you'll be fine i'll tell you how i've been catching all my big fish lately and this goes for a couple i saw a comment a little while ago or before the show started talking about um you know the, the you're not being able to catch fish this time of the year the, da the bass, once the sun gets up, and if you get a good sunny day with some wind, they'll pull out to the drops. They'll pull out to the edge of a creek channel. They'll pull out to the, a ledge. They'll pull out somewhere on, on a point that's a steeper side of a point, and they'll sit right on the top of that drop where the current's running over or running past. You know, the current wind creates current. There's current on the lake, whether you know it or not, there's usually current. Um, my lakes don't have any current when there's no wind, but they'll get out on those drops and you can drag something either up those drops or off those drops and, and catch fish. But you've got to drag painfully slow. Jig, Texas rig, Carolina rig, really, 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 really slow uh, to get them to bite. Um, I caught an eight a seven, a seven and a half, a six, a six and a half today. And I was dragging so slow that you couldn't even tell I was fishing. And so five minutes of cast is basically what it was. And that's what you can, that's what you got to do, man. You really do. So farm all cowboy. What's up, man? Thanks for the 10 bucks. He said, thanks. Thinking of getting another rod and reel. I know you're a 13 guy, but could you give me your opinion between the concept a three and the dial of Tatula CT Caught between the two. Thanks, Gene. The A3 is a swim bait reel, a big, it's big. It's got holds a lot of line and it's made for Alabama rigs and swim baits. Um, the A2, I totally recommend. It is bulletproof. Matt, the real guy at 13, for a little bit of history with him, he was uh he he ran he worked at and then eventually managed a um a warranty shop for reels for 20 years he worked in that shop and so he knows the ins and outs of everything that can break on a reel and so this reel he made it to where it's it made it as bulletproof as he could it's a little bit heavier than the, the original concept a but it's a really good reel the tatula i like tatulas i really do i've never played with the ct but tatulas are a good solid reel themselves so i don't know man it's one of those things that's going to be a give and take but the A3, understand, if you're looking for just like a standard bait caster, the A3 is not the standard bait caster. It is a big swim bait, Alabama rig, big bait reel. And it's got a man of a, it's got, gosh almighty, I think it's got 43 pounds of drag. So it's, it's like a saltwater reel anyway. So uh, Josh Bishop says it caught a 1975 tonight on a buzz bait. Uh, but I've been having trouble with hook sets on wacky rigs. Any advice? Um, just make sure that your hook, let me see if I can get this in the camera. Your hook is going 
into and out of the wacky rig and it's not going along the length of the wacky rig is I, I hope you understand that but uh that's the best i have and then just let them take it and then don't set the hook hard just kind of pull into it and then once your rod starts to bend then pull the rest of the way so you just kind of want to reel you know pull your tension into it and then pull back a little bit harder uh let's see Michael Moon, how's it going, man? <laughs> Matt Shepard, love the garden video on I, on Instagram. Them tomato plants are looking good. Man, my wife is not looking forward to my tomatoes coming in. Uh, <laughs> that's when we start canning. Um, yeah, guys, I've got a, my garden is 100 feet by 100 feet, uh, 15 rows. Uh, I've got beans and a whole bunch of other stuff. My Instagram video covers it. I'm thinking about doing a Maybe not this year, but maybe later on doing a, a separate YouTube channel where I just I just vlog my day out on the farm because I do so much that you guys don't see that I'd love to share. Uh, my passion is gardening, always has been. Uh, I'm really good at fishing, really good at hunting, really good at the outdoors, but I grew up gardening because that's how we fed the family when I was a kid. That's how my dad fed the family. So I learned at an early age how to make things grow. And so it's been a lot of fun and I'm learning a ton this year too. I'm trying to go as much organic and non-chemical as I possibly can. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not going to get all, you know, crazy organic, but I'm going to try to do it as much as I can. Anyway, thanks, man. I appreciate it, Matt. Uh, Alec Parson, I have the uh, opposite problem. I stick to two to four baits and won't get a bite. Almost always have fluke, shaky head, shatter bait, some sort of crank bait. Any advice on what to cha change bait wise or areas to try? Oh man, let me think. Um, same thing. Leave stuff at home that you want, you know, only bring the stuff that you want to learn, especially this time of the year. I would recommend this time of the year, a big worm on a Texas rig. Uh, you don't have to peg the, bait, the, the weight unless you are fishing like brush piles and stuff like that. And then the second one would be a jig is really good this time of the year. Um, and a buzz bait, a buzz bait is one of those things where it, it's even in the heat of the sun of the, of noon, if the bass are up shallow and active, you can catch them on a buzz bait. I should have been throwing one today because they were up really, really shallow, a lot shallower than they've been, but I was also able to catch some out pretty deep. So, uh, Osborne outdoors when fishing the shallow grass this time of the year, do you look for any specific areas of grass? I want to find the grass that's going out the furthest. In other words, the, the grass that's the closest to deep water is where I'm going to start. It's basically a point, you know, and if, if you get grass or like in straight lines and there's no ins and outs and curves and stuff, I don't even fish that area. I'll bypass that and find other, I don't know. It all depends on the grass, but the biggest thing is, is I want to find the stuff that's the closest to the deep water. So I got a piece of popcorn stuck in my teeth. There we go. <laughs> Goodness. Uh, Trevor Wagner just picked up my first 13 fishing bait caster, the Inception. I have a loose Shimano Daiwa, but my first 13 fishing, any thoughts on the Inception reel? It's it's one you can beat the crap out of. It really, when they first came out with it, I, I my, my impressions with it and then using it for a year, it is, it is a no frills bait caster and i it's one of those that reminds me of the old shimano um uh corrado the old old green ones that lasted you a hundred years it's it's that's kind of way i the way i feel it's just a really good reel that just has has you know not a whole lot of bells and whistles just what you need to you know just the stuff you need to have a good reel so it's a good buy it really is i've still got a couple of them that my kids use but I, 13 sends me the new reels every single year and I, I, I start putting those on and beating them up and doing what, what I do. You know, me and Gerald Swindle, uh, yeah, he, he explained it very well. Our job is to beat up our equipment so you don't have to. And so I, I've got half the rods I use on a daily are all prototypes. And, uh, and I, I'm, not a, I, I'm not shy to say that I've broken a lot of them. But that's my job. That's what I'm supposed to do. Uh, Johnny Ariel, man, I have a new addi addiction catching hybrids. <laughs> Boy, can they fight any ins insight on insight on catching them deep? Um, honestly, 
if you're going to catch them deep, I always used a flutter spoon, always used a little small flutter spoon that I could cast to them. I'd see them on side scan and I'd cast to them. But really, man, if they're not busting top water, I usually don't even go for them. But they're so much fun. I When I was living right down the road from Clarks Hill Lake, right in the evening as the sun was starting to cold, go down, I'd jump in my truck, drag my boat to the lake, put it in the water, run up and down the lake until I saw them up schooling on the blueback herring. And then I would go and catch two of them, throw them in the live well, run back home and take them, take them out of the live well, still flopping, fl fillet them up and throw them on the grill and cook them for me and my wife. I love them fresh, man. It was so much fun. Awesome. Awesome. I don't live close enough to a lake that has them now to do that, but that was a blast. Uh, ever heard of a jig with a Cinco trailer? My buddy caught a seven pounder. Yes, I have. I think they call it a jig and twig something crazy like that but yeah man i've heard of it i've never done it but i've definitely heard it do you have any recommendations on starting a youtube channel business joining a pre-existing business called woods to water outdoors and would really like to grow about to get much or get more merch soon if i can post this on here i'm sorry thanks for, i typically i don't mind I, I don't let it happen but i don't mind ashton i really don't uh, at least not tonight <laughs> i'm just in one of those moods but uh definitely the best thing to do with youtube and stuff like that is uh be an individual don't be a business because it, it for you know youtube channels or or people that grow large followings the people are following the person, not the business. And that's nine times out of 10. That's what's going on. Unless you've been doing it for a really, really long time. And then the other thing is, is YouTube is content driven. You've got to produce content or you just get forgotten. So make sure you do that. But uh, the biggest thing is, is, is let people, you know, who pick the person in your company that is, is going to work the hardest, going to be there a long time and is very charismatic and and let them be the face of it so it's charlie elliott good for bass fishing i want to check it out tyler i have not been there in years i used to wrote, write the uh, fishing report for georgia outdoor news for charlie elliott but it was really good and it's always been really decent um but i don't know what kind of management they've been doing down there i know the state's been doing a lot of work with fisheries management on our public fishing area and a couple of the ones down south but I really don't know what they've been doing at Charlie Elliott. Hopefully they've, they've got a biologist on duty there. I'll tell you what, next time I see a bio, my biologist, which I saw him yesterday, um, but I see our biologist out on the public fishing area, I will, uh, I'll will pull him aside and ask him if he's doing Charlie Elliott or if somebody else is, and then I'll find out. So uh, let's see. <laughs> this isn't exactly fishing related, but what is your go-to music out on the water? This time of the year when I'm fishing really, really slow, I play country. Um, I'll flip, I'll flip my phone on and I'll play my playlist for country. But if it's, if I'm pre-spawn or, you know, it's a day where I'm fishing fairly fast. I don't, I don't want water. I don't want music that's going to slow me down. So I usually pick something a little bit faster. Uh, usually like nineties, 90s pop or 90s rock or something like that and i like heavy metal too the old 80s and 90s heavy metal so it all just all depends so i'm just a music fan so um let's see is six four one great for top water for crankbaits and texas rigs it's good for uh crankbaits i like a seven um like a seven four to one or set you know a seven speed reel for top water and i like an eight speed reel for texas rigs but you can get by with a seven i just like to be able to reel that thing up fast and make another cast i'm i'm usually working working wa water with a texas rig pretty good so uh let's see saw greg blanchard's classic video tell me what you were what were you tossing on your kayak bassmaster classic tourney days i what was i throwing just throwing a chatterbait i was throwing a jig i had a cinco tied on but never threw it um in a texas rig i think i can't remember off the top of my head i'd have to look at my list but yeah that's what i had on there i, I was mostly throwing a chatterbait though and a, and a crankbait so I just wish the fish, I would have found deeper fish. I would have been a lot more comfortable. 
Um, <laughs> Gene, you don't like throwing the old ball and chain anymore? I do. Um, I just get more bites on a Texas rig right now. I really do. I, I had a matter of fact, I had, I did have a tech, a Carolina rig tied on for practice for, for that, uh, classic tournament, but not, not during the tournament. But, um, I love throwing a Carolina rig. Absolutely. I'm not ashamed at all to throw one, but it's, it's just the Texas rig has been working so good for me. No reason to change. So. Do I use miracle Grow in my garden? I don't. I, I used to. Um, I used to use P Peter's Professional, which is a, a base. It's the same exact thing as miracle Grow, just less expensive. Um, but I don't anymore. I do a lot of mulching. Um, I do a lot of, um, of cover cropping. Um, and I try not to put too much. I, I did put a little bit of organic fertilizer this year on it, but I, I have chickens. So I use chicken manure and that kind of stuff. And so I've, I've got probably one of the best tomato uh, crops that I've ever had, um, easily ever had. And that's because I've been doing some really, really, really fine fertilizing with, uh, with all natural stuff. So I loved uh, miracle Grow and Peters though. If I needed like leaves to grow on those tomato plants, if I wanted to grow them taller, I'd throw that stuff on there. And in two weeks they were just going crazy. But I, I found out that it's usually not a pretty, not a good, good idea. But anyway, I could talk about garden all day, gardening all day long. Oh, let's see. Applin's heart. What's going on, man? He said, Hey buddy, I desperately need some tips for Clark's Hill. It's killing me. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm lost. Uh, you the man. So I, uh, can you help me? You've got to get offshore this time of the year out on those humps out in front of, um, uh, is it Cherokee Creek? I think it's Cherokee Creek. All those humps out there along the Georgia little river. Uh, if there's grass on them, there's going to be fish on them. Uh, and the mouth of Georgia little river and, and Savannah river, all those humps, you've got to get out there and throw a Carolina rig, throw a shaky head. Uh, my favorite color worm out there is a, uh, a trick worm in Green Pumpkin Magic. And uh, and just drag a Carolina rig to your arm falls off, man. You'll catch them. They'll be out there. But 10 cast, if they're not biting, go to another hump. But there's got to be grass on them. So, and I don't know what the grass conditions are on Clark's Hill. I, I, haven't, been, I haven't even paid attention in the last several years. So... Uh, looking for a yak in the six to seven hundred dollar range. Any suggestions? Oh, let's see. There's the bite, the Jackson bite. There's the bona fide. Um, oh, it's the 11 footer. I can't remember the name of it. Um, my mind just went blank and they're going to kill me. I, I just I'm so tired. I cannot remember. Anyway, bona fide's got one that's about that that price. But anyway, so uh, definitely, definitely check those two out. What reel do you use for getting bass out of heavy mats? Um, I use uh, Concept A or Concept C, but the biggest thing is 8, 3 to 1 gear ratio reel. Crank the drag all the way down, 65, 50 to 65 pound test braid. I use Seaguar Smackdown um, and set the hook, get their head turned, and, and don't let up. You really got to force them out of there, so uh kevin fishgall hey gene your content is incredible thanks man uh with five tournaments left in the season i'm currently in the lead for philadelphia bassmaster angler of the year by 40 points wow i said most of that's thanks to you i appreciate it man that's awesome that's a big lead it really is how many i wonder how many turn tell me how many tournaments we have total during the season if it's philly you're probably about a third of the way through the season if i'm guessing so what kind of rig do you recommend for a fluke? I love just your standard weightless fluke with a swivel up front, about 18 inches of, of, in front of it. Uh, that's what I'll throw most of the time. A lot of people are live streaming fishing on Twitch. We need some fluke master on Twitch. That would be awesome. My only issue is the lake I, I fish almost every day right down the road from my house. When you leave my driveway, there's no cell signal. You don't get a signal till you come back to my driveway and you get on my booster. Uh, so there's no signal in this area. So that's the hardest thing. If I'm on Chickamauga or Gunnersville, I could probably do that. So that would be awesome. I didn't even think about that. So let's see. Don Yaunt says, I don't know if you follow M MLF Pro Tour. I caught some of the coverage of the pros had these cones. 
They look like traffic cones. I know what you're talking about. Things on the deck. Do you have any idea what they are used for? Yes, they're probably sight fishing for smallmouth in clear water. So you can't see because of the glare on the water. So these are just big viewers that you put down into the water. Just the, the bottom of them is like a clear window. And you put it down in the water and you can look and see the fish deep. And you can just, they don't want to turn their electronics on because their electronics are spooking the fish. So they literally look down in that clear water and they can see the smallmouth and can throw to them. Oh, I'm glad Jordan brought me this water. I needed it. I'm pretty dehydrated. I, I did drink a lot of water today, but it was so hot. I was sweating to death today. I retired from the Army in 2014 after 21 years. I probably I, You probably went in about the same time I did. Uh, you taught me to bass fish with your Texas rig video. When I, when I win the Bassmaster, I'll shout you out. That's funny. That's awesome, Buster. Way to go, brother. I went in in, uh, in November of 06 is when I went in. I got out in uh, November of 02. So I was six years in. I was a, I was a 91 Bravo, 91 Papa, X, a medic and x-ray tech. So um, let's see. Jacob Simpson, I have quit fishing topwater. It's, oh, I haven't quit fishing topwater. Water. It's so much fun. I haven't even hardly used a worm this year. Man, you got to drag a worm. I know top water's a blast, but uh, I catch bigger ones dragging. Uh, thoughts on taking lures out of the box and into the tackle box. I see all the pros with walls of lures, but doesn't make sense to me as lure is at home. Downside is weight and hook rust. Thoughts? Hmm. I'm trying to understand that question. Um, I have a whole wall of baits. Um, I don't like to have too many in my box just because I, I just two of each crankbait or two of, you know, a, a couple of ba bags of plastics. You just, you don't need it all. You just need a little bit, but uh, I don't know. I, you'd have to ask that question again. I, I, there's a lot of it. I don't understand. Let's see. Oh, that's a good question. Adrian Warfield Fishing says, I'm so used to fishing little lakes in my kayak. Any advice on breaking down bigger bodies of water? Sure. Treat them like little lakes. In other words, pick an area, usually a creek arm, like a small creek arm, and only fish that creek arm. You're going to have everything you need in that creek arm. You're going to have little pockets and coves and points and creek channels and that kind of stuff. Just make them, you know, bring your area down small and start fishing just that creek for about four, five, six trips, get used to it and then expand from there. But even when I'm fishing tournaments, if I go to a lake that I've never been to before, I try to pick an area that I'm going to concentrate on and I try not to bump around. Sorry, guys, I ate pizza tonight, and it pizza destroys my digestion. So I, if you see me looking like I'm about to throw up, I'm not. It's just the, the gluten in the pizza getting to me. So let's see. Kevin, thanks for the twenty uh, for the $2, man. He says uh, 192 people watching and only 41 likes. Come on, people, smash it. Yeah, dude, hit the like button. I always forget to tell you guys all that, but it is what it is. Oh, and one more thing. Let me uh, throw a banner up there real quick. This is still going on. 30% off everything on flutemaster.com. They use the code 30 off. I keep forgetting to promote that. And uh, we're and it, it we're li literally trying to get rid of all all of the uh, the stuff we have in there so we can uh, so we can change things around a bit. So if you guys are looking for for, for flutemaster apparel, there you go. Uh Andy Middleton, you don't need to live stream out there. No, I don't. I don't. I try. I, I hate shooting video out there, but man, that's the only place I can do it real quick. Um, and it's one of those lakes where you just got to, if you're not out there all the time, you're not going to go and catch the big ones like we do. Definitely not. Um, what do you think about lure lock boxes? You know, that's a good question. And I thought this when I very, they first introduced them at ICAST is that, I like my baits to slide around in the box. If they slide around, I can fit more baits in there. So I can fit four, five, six different colors of crankbaits in the same little compartment. But when they stick to the bottom, you're limited to the number of baits you can stick in there. Plus, 
you know, if your if your terminal tackle sticking to the bottom, it's hard to get it out anyway when it's not that kind of stuff. It's just it. I just have never been impressed with a, a box that has sticky stuff in the bottom of it. Just that never made made sense to me. So where is Damon? <laughs> I don't know, Stephen. I have no clue, man. We'll see what happens. For you guys that don't know, Damien is right now leading our our uh, KBF Challenge tournament, our monthly tournament on in Georgia. He's leading it, but I came back and I didn't hadn't fished before yesterday, and I am behind him by two inches. He had 114 and a half inches. Now I'm two and a half inches behind him, and I've got tw 112 right now. So out of the blue, I came back and and I'm almost caught up with him. So and his goal this year is to beat me. So uh, we will see. I, I was looking forward to him getting on here, but I don't guess he's seen the results for my fish in the last couple of days. Purple Cottonmouth, thanks for five bucks. He says, I'm a beginner fisherman and was wondering if it's normal to go out some days and catch three to five and others catch nothing. Yes, that's what keeps us coming back. We got to try to figure out where we made the mistakes. Always, 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 always be be learning. Let the bass teach you teach you stuff. But uh Dude, go, go watch um, my beginner's playlist. It talks about a lot of that stuff in a, several of those videos. So, um, hey, buddy, you have any tips for me? You know where I'm at? I need to catch some decent fish. <laughs> oh, man. Yep, definitely, definitely. Uh, yeah, the, the best tips of that, Applin's Hardy, man, just go out there and fish those humps. You really, you'll get them. You'll get them. We, we sometimes would catch them on a deep diving crankbait this time of the year, but mostly just dragging something like a Carolina rig on those humps. Uh, weeks fishing, where's the grass on chick? I don't know. I have not been a chick in over a year and a half. I need to get up there, but Gunnersville always has been, lately has been where I wanted to go. So Kevin Fishgall says 19 tournaments all season. That's a lot of tournaments, man. Dude, if you can come out at Angler of the Year after 19 tournaments, you did something serious. Let's see. It says Damon is hammering it even for that place. Yes, he is. 114 inches is hard to beat. Hard to beat. So my goal this year is 120, believe it or not. I want to catch one over 26. It's just a special place, man. It really is. I have two gar in my pond that is two ponds connected. Will they eat up all the good fish? No, they won't. Mm -mm. They like small. They like the bluegill. Is I've never seen a gar eat a big bass. Maybe a small one, but usually they like something they can get. They've got small mouths. They got big, long, you know, lots of teeth, but they don't eat really big baits or really big fish. So. Uh, King RJ 1223 thoughts on buying a used or new bass boat. Yes. Buy mine. <laughs> Mine's going to be up for sale shortly. I'm getting uh, Lumacraft to send me the, uh, the, um, uh, the title and I'm going to put it up on the market here in the next, uh, probably the next month, month and a half. But, uh, best thing is, is always just like a car, go have the motor checked out, take it to a, a mechanic or set up an appointment with the mechanic to take it to him. Let it run, let him run it through the test and through its paces, see how many hours are on it. They can on the newer motors, they can print off and see all of the all of the error codes and everything that have that have happened on that on that motor and everything else. So you definitely want to have a mechanic check it out. So um all right, let me catch my breath real quick. Uh, Sam Lettner, he says, um, I was wanting to know, can I throw fluorocarbon for top water? Because I mostly throw 15 pound fluoro. Probably not. I do it a lot and I always regret it always because I'll get 10, 15 feet into the retrieve and that bait will go under because that fluorocarbon pulls it down. So the best thing to do is if you want the best of both worlds or, or kind of the, 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 the happy middle is copolymer line get some iser line triple x copolymer uh that's decent for top water and it, it works something like uh like fluorocarbon but doesn't sink quite as fast um but mono or braid are two of your best things to do with with top water 
but even a buzz bait, man, I like to fish a buzz bait with my rod tip low. And if I'm throwing fluorocarbon, it pulls that buzz bait under. Drives me nuts, but I always regret it. Um, <laughs> Gene, pack your frogs if you come to the G. Man, I always have my frogs with me this time of the year. I need to get over there. Um, I'm just getting ready for iCast right now. All my sponsors are sending me stuff to do videos with. You guys are going to see some really cool stuff come out this year um, from 13 and a couple of other companies. Spro's got some good stuff coming out. Uh, dude, I, yeah, Spro's got some really cool stuff coming out. But uh, And I haven't really paid much attention to what 13's baits are, but we'll see what they've got. My dad and I fish in a cove next to a cramp campground. They're always slamming, slammed with fishing boats. What's the best lure or bait you recommend for a busy cove and for catfish? I don't do much catfishing, so I, I, I would not be the person to ask for about that. But for any kind of busy water, I'm usually throwing something either super, super slow. So my, my home lake where I catch all my big ones or have been catching big ones lately, I it's a public fishing area and it gets hammered. I mean, the, the parking lot's full every day. And so the way I do it is I fish either super, super slow, super, super fast, or really small baits. Those are the three. And usually you can figure something out from there. But the bass will get out away from people. They'll get out into deeper water, and then you just got to find them out there. And it takes a little bit of time. So do you ever use garlic scent or any other scents on your saw on your plastic baits? Yes, I almost always have JJ's Magic. Um on my bait's been using it for years and years and years. But uh JJ's magic, even the even the clear on my soft plastics, I never put baits in the water if they don't smell like garlic. So is a black max reel a good reel? It's a it's an okay reel. It's a good beginner's reel, but if you it's not gonna last you like three or four years. It, it but it's a good beginner's reel. It's not gonna break the bank and it'll work. It'll especially if you're learning. Learn how to cast a bait caster. It's a decent reel. How much for my boat? Um, I know what it's worth. I have a have an idea what I think I can get for it. I'm gonna ask thirty thousand. It's only got like 180 hours on the motor or something like that. I'll have to look. It's like 175, 180 hours on the motor. So, um, but yeah, that's what I'm gonna be asking. Probably thirty grand is what I'm gonna ask for it. So. Uh, King RJ one, two, three, where are you from? I'm from Rome, Georgia. I grew up in Covington, Georgia. Um, and, uh, I fish all over the Southeast mostly, but I'll travel to Minnesota, or Wisconsin, at least once a year. Love Louisiana, love Florida, that kind of stuff. Uh, any suggestion on Cali lakes, low visibility, high temps, lots of algae. Oh man, I don't know, James. I really, uh, it depends on your water temps. It depends on the current. Uh, usually when the water temps get really, really high, like up in the mid eighties, shooting Louisiana, I was fishing 94 degree water temperature last week uh, at Caddo Lake. And the biggest thing is, is get into the current. That current stirs up the water and creates oxygen. And they're going to be in those current breaks and chasing bait fish. Um, anytime, any, any lake, I'm always looking for bait fish. I'm always looking for current in the summertime if there's no grass. So do you use braid for all your spinning reels? What size? And Scott, that's, I always use braid. I use 20 pound. Um, I don't use anything less. I don't use anything more. 20 pounds always been good for me. Uh, Seagar's got the, the high vis, um, go was it um oh my goodness what do they call it anyway it's it's a high vis green um and it's really really bright i use that um i used to use their yellow when they had it but uh it's usually a high vis because i'm going to put a long fluorocarbon leader on it anyway and i want to be able to see a fish bite if i'm fishing finesse style so how do you decide when to throw a spro type versus a reeling frog like a top toad um, let me think about that for just a split second. I guess, I guess what makes it is if there's a lot of action on the water, if the fish are, if I feel like the fish are willing to chase something 
or if I've got sporadic cover and it's not really thick grass, I'm going to be throwing a top toad or a, a horny toad, usually what I throw, um, or a rage toad. I'm going to throw something like that. And, you know, for you guys that don't know, a toad is one that you throw it, cast it out on an extra wide gap hook and you reel it back to you on the top. And it's got those two little legs that kick behind it. That's a toad. A frog is a hollow body that you work across the grass and you can walk it and fish it super slow. So if the bass are really active, I'm going to throw a toad. If they're not super active, but I feel like I can get them to come up out of that grass and blow something up, I'm going to throw a frog. So definitely that's a good question, man. Um, What's your opinion on Shimano DC reels? I personally have never been a Shimano fan. Um, not even before I started getting, you know, fishing professionally or anything else. Just wasn't a Shimano fan. I always felt like they were, they cost more than what they felt like. You know, they didn't feel like they were worth as much as they were charging for them. But I've got friends that love the DCs and I've got friends that bought them and returned them or sold them. Um, and so it's just one of those things. I like the idea of never getting a backlash. I just have never used one to be able to tell you what I how I feel about it. So that was kind of a long, drawn out answer, but that's kind of how I feel. So uh, I'm looking for my first boat for about ten grand. Any recommendations, dude? Shop for him and take your time. Really, my first one I was uh, ten thousand two hundred. That that tan one that I had, and it did me well was really, really good until all the welds broke on it. But uh, it, it, it started the YouTube channel out and it got, it got me rocking and rolling. But the best thing is, is don't be in a hurry and be willing to, to pay to have every single boat that you want to, that you're thinking about buying checked out until you get one. So 10,000 is a good price though. You should be able to get one with about an 80, about a 90 horsepower motor on it. So landing my PB on a boo gas spinnerbait. That's awesome, man. Best beginner bass boat for the price. Currently fish out of a 14-foot sea nymph John boat, but want to eventually be able to fish tournaments. Wow. Let me think. I used to fish tournaments out of a 14-foot Grumman John boat with an eight-horse tiller on the back. And I put a cooler, a cooler in the front of it for a live well. Um Dude, yeah, look for a just an aluminum, like a, a modified V, a mod V aluminum boat that's got everything you need for a tournament, like a live well and lights and all the safety gear and everything else. And then just start fishing your local little pot tournaments. Uh, <laughs> Farmall Cowboy is going to get me in trouble. He said, what is your two cents on Vibe Kayaks? I'm going to be as nice as I possibly can be on vibe. I got a friend that works for him and he's a really good friend of mine. And him and I have had this discussion. Vibe's got to stop copying people. They got to start coming up with their own ideas. And that's my opinion. And I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, hopefully they'll come out with their own, their own kayaks in the next you know year or two. Uh, what do you recommend storing a battery for the XI3 on a bona fide 127? I'm thinking modifying my crate to be a battery box, tackle box for less trips back to the truck. Thoughts? Get the 54 amp Dakota Lithium. It's a good battery for that motor. It's not very big. It's only about this big. Um, it'll fit in that front hatch and it doesn't add any weight to the front hatch. Uh, it, it doesn't cause your boat to go in, you know, go, go nose down or anything else. That 54 amp hour battery will do you just fine. And you won't have to run your wire all the way to the back of the boat. If you're going to do a hundred amp hour, put it in the back behind your, your uh, black pack, but don't reduce your amount of tackle storage for a battery. I think that's the dumbest thing anybody can do because you need tackle storage. So, but the 54 amp Dakota lithium battery, will last you all day of fishing. So, and I've got the 50 pound thrust trolling motor, so I, I guarantee you it'll last all day. Um, what's your top three lures to fish Rocky Bottom Lakes? Texas rig, jig, crankbait. 
what's a good summer bait? What's a good summer bait for deep clear strip mines? Drop shot, uh, any kind of finesse stuff, Nico rig, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, trying to think off the top of my head. Um, crankbait, if they're up a little bit shallower than, you know, if they're shallower than 20 feet, a crankbait will be good. But my first thought is really light fluorocarbon line. So a drop shot, Nico rig, Ned rig, that kind of stuff. So. Let's see. Michael Moon, given the current boat market, you should easily get 30 grand for your boat. That is in line for the year old Vexus 1880 we just bought. Know your boat and it easily worth 30. Man, I hope so. My only issue, my only, my only re worry is the Evinrude on the back. And it's still under warranty and everything else, but you're going to work through mer Mercury with the warranty. And it, you know, it can be pretty, pretty difficult. So my, being honest with you guys, that's the that's my worry is is that and I love that Evan Root. It is such a great motor. It gives me so it's it has given me absolutely zero issues. You know, my only issue with that thing has been the gas. I it, I know it says put you can put ethanol in it, but every time I put ethanol in it within the first within the next month and a half, I'm cleaning out that the fuel filter because it's got water in it. So, but uh. That's another cool thing. It's got sensors everywhere. So whenever anything's about to go wrong, it lets you know. It's the coolest thing. Hey, Gene, any tips on large pond with six inch visibility, five to six foot depth, very little bottom contour, asking for a friend. <laughs> um, six inch um, visibility. Dude, my first thought is a chatterbait or a square bill, something like that. You know, because a square bill will run you just above the just above the bottom. Uh, you'll be able to bump things if there's cover and that kind of stuff. A Texas rig, a, a creature bait. I don't know what the bottom feels like. If it's really soft bottom, try not to fish anything that's going to sit on the bottom. Try to fish things that are going to be up off the bottom, and you should be all right. <laughs> Braid on spinning is a state law in the lower 48. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. That's funny. Uh, what brand of tungsten do you use? Oh, man, Eli. I've got uh, Strike King Tour Grade Tungsten um, is what I've got mostly because I've got a I've got a bunch of it, and I'm just I'm working my way through it. Um, another one is, um, oh, my gosh. What is the name of that tungsten that I really like down in Florida? Uh, Hog Tech. H-A-W-G, Hog Tech makes some really good tungsten. I love the shape of it. Um, I love how it penetrates through cover it, using lighter, you know, lighter weight and that kind of stuff. It's just a really good sinker. I just had, don't have a lot of it. I, I lost a terminal box that was full of it, and I haven't been able to replace it yet. So how do I feel about adding Ned Riggs right now? Fish them I, all year long, man. Ned Riggs work all year long. Except you're going to catch catfish on them on, on Clark's Hill. You're going to catch um, bluegill on them on Clark's Hill, but you'll definitely catch bass. Brent Coleman, Mercury is the best man. I, I hope so. That's my next boat's going to have a Mercury on it. So there's they're going to build start building my boat July 1st, my new boat. Um, it's going to be another Alumacrack. Craft Pro 185. It is going to be the very first 2022 model that comes off, off the, the the assembly line. So I'm excited about that. And that's why my boat's about to be up for sale. So um, let's see. Best baits on flooded small lakes after a week of rain with really dirty water. Go shallow. Go super, super shallow and pitch to cover. So here's the thing is what I've noticed. If you can't reach the bank with a cast, you're probably on the wrong bank. I hardly ever catch fish back in the woods, back in the cover. But if you can fish, you can, if you can fish thick cover that's along the bank, but you could still make a cast and hit the bank, there's typically bass. And what the reason for this, I think, is because that's still cover that's close to deep water close to that escape route for the bass. If the water starts to fall all of a sudden, they can pull out and they feel safe. That 
water that goes way back in the trees, it means it's on a flat and it, they can get stuck back there if the water starts to fall. So they don't typically get back in that area. It's usually right along wherever the steeper bank is. So, and they're going to be dirt shallow, dude. They'll be right up on the bank. As long as that water's still rising, the minute it starts to fall, they're going to pull out to the, out, the first available cover out from the bank. So how much for your boat? I'm asking 30,000 for my boat. And it is a Lumacraft Pro 185. It's a one night. It's a uh, 2019 with a 115 horse motor on it. It's got three fish finders or three graphs, uh, side scan, down scan, spot lock. It's got the new Tor Pro uh, motor guide on it. Uh, I got a few things I need to fix on it, like a hinge or a couple of other little doodads. I'm going to clean it up real good. Uh, just haven't got around to doing that yet. But anyway, yeah, man, that's what it's going to be selling for. Uh, <laughs> uh, whoever buys your boat or are we guaranteed the fish that you catch? <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, if somebody pays me a, a 32, 33,000 for it, I'll leave the, the waypoints on it. Those are worth a couple thousand. I guarantee you that. So let's see. Tony Fisher, how you doing, man? He says, hey, Gene, what is a good size weight for Texas rig for mid-sized bass? Thanks. I always start with a 3 8 ounce. Just my confidence. Um, I know the fall rate of it. I know a lot of – I fish, fish it so much. I, if I'm fishing deep or I need to get a, a bait down, you know, 12, 15, 20 feet, I'm going to throw a half ounce. I don't like to throw any heavier than that on a Texas rig unless I'm punching. And when I get into thick cover – I don't like to punch heavier than an ounce and a quarter. So that gets into a whole different video. But the biggest thing is, is start off with a three eighths ounce. It's got a good fall rate. You, you can stay in contact with the bottom. It's just a really good all around weight. And I do the same thing with jigs, three eighths ounce jigs too. <laughs> Holy cow. I'd like to, I'd have to take a loan out for that boat. Yeah. It's a really good boat though. It's actually, it, it, um, with all the stuff on it and everything I've got in it and stuff like that, it's a it's about worth forty two thousand. So that's why I'm trying. I'm I'm going to list it for thirty, uh, and of course it's all negotiating from there. But man, I really think I can get thirty grand for it. So, uh, do you recommend spending more on your on a your rod and reel, and also do you recommend spending more on your spinning and casting setup? So. Here's how I feel. Now, you guys know being sponsored by 13 for as long as I have and being where I am in their pro staff, I don't pay for rods and reels, but I still use $80, $120 rods. Matter of fact, I almost ordered one of their $50 or $60 rods this last night. And I kind of stepped back and I said, you know what? I'm going to wait till they're their new A3s come in, or not A3s, what are they called? Uh, Fate uh, v, v, V2s, V3s. Anyway, yeah, the Fate V2s, I think, is what they're, the white rods. So I'm going to wait for those to come in. But anyway, so I always recommend, these days you can get a really good rod for between $180 and $120. You can get a really good reel that will last you a long time for between $120 and $220. And so anything more than that, you're getting more bells and whistles, but it doesn't really help you much. You know, I was talking to Jordan today and I was, as I'm dragging this, this Texas rig and I'm dragging it up this hump and I'm feeling rocks and I'm like, okay, there's one rock and I'm doing what I call counting rocks. It's, that's how fast, how slow I'm dragging. I drag it over a rock, I drag it over another rock and I drag it and I'm like, oh man, I, I felt something a little different. And I literally feel like I felt that bass go and just kind of blow water at my, at my worm. And I'm like, and so I stopped and I shook it and got bit right then and there. And, and that was an $80 rod. That was a, that was a fate black is what it was. The new fate blacks. And I'm like, dude, 20 or 15 years ago, you couldn't get that out of a $200 rod. 
Now you can get it out of an $80 rod and it's amazing the sensitivity you can get now for an inexpensive rod. So I never recommend buying the, the, the most expensive rods and the most expensive reels out there. But I really don't recommend buying the cheapest ones either because the cheapest ones will just leave you heartbroken. So any tips for a rainy day tournament? Yes, the bass are already wet. So the rain usually doesn't affect them. Lightning and thunder usually affects them. Uh, the vibration of the thunder, the flash of the lightning, that usually has a negative effect. A rainy tournament day, I just throw my rain gear on and I fish, try to fish it like there's no rain at all because those bass, last I checked, they're in the water. You know, they're wet. So uh, it's all in your head after that. Bank fishing with live bait for years, but got bait, got a bait caster for Father's Day and new to bass fishing, been starting out with a Texas rig. What color should I fish right now? Chattanooga, Tennessee. Green pumpkin. Uh, green pumpkin, green pumpkin, green pumpkin. Uh, any kind of soft plastics. Uh, and you can have glitter in them. You can dye them. You can get green pumpkin in another color or whatever. But the, there's three main colors that I fish in the summertime. Black and blue, green pumpkin, and some type of a red color like a red shad or a, or a June, not a June bug, um, red bug and uh, tequila sunrise. So those are the, those are the colors I use in the, in the, in the summertime. Hey, that'd be a good idea. Carl says, come back to Fort Gordon and give us a veterans day, man. I'd love to do that. I wonder if I got any connections there anymore. I'll have to put some feelers out with some buddies that still live there. So most of my connections have retired because <laughs> I'm getting old, but, uh, but definitely I, I probably have a few, few buddies that still, uh, work over in back hall. So, uh, should I switch over to a bait caster or just stay with what I'm comfortable with? Try a bait caster out. And the reason I recommend a bait, uh, just trying it out and, and really giving it your, your all to learn it. It's not as hard as people think people say it is. I got some good videos on it and everything else, but the reason is, is that I can get three to four times more cast in per day than I can with a spinning rod. I can, I'm a lot more accurate with a bait caster. Now I used to love, I fish a spinning rod hundred percent of the time. Now I fish a spinning rod when it's necessary, but with a bait caster, you can fish more baits more effectively, be more accurate with your cast and make more cast per, uh, per day. And all of that equals more fish in the boat. So just go get one, try it out, practice, practice, practice in your yard alone where you're not making a fool of yourself and then take it out and go fishing with it, man. You won't be sorry. My father-in-law many, many years ago forced me to learn how to fish a bait caster and I am forever indebted to him because I'm glad I did. So what recommendation do you have on fish finders for a kayak? I'm a novice. Would like to see the contour of the lake. Um, with any any fish finder, I say make sure it has down imaging, make sure that it has a mapping, and make sure that it has regular sonar and you're good. Um, after that, get the biggest screen that you can afford. And then if you can afford side scan, that's always a bonus. But you've got to really get a big screen for side scan or you miss a lot of detail. Um uh, the best thing to do is get one and learn how to read it because a fish finder is worth nothing if you don't know what you're looking at. So definitely. All right. You guys, don't forget, use go to flutemaster.com and use code 30 off to get uh, get all of the stuff on flutemaster.com for 30% off. So, all right, last question. Um uh, can cast a bait caster pretty far a, a sidearm. But overhead, a, I backlash almost every other cast, even with the brake crank down. Advice to work on this. With an overhead cast, I almost, first of all, I almost always throw sidearm. Always. Because you get a lower trajectory and a smaller splash. But if I'm going to throw overhead, think of it this way. You've got to release that button just a little bit earlier and, and put about another five or six or seven inches of line out from the tip of your rod. So, Typically on a sidearm, you probably got about this much line out and then the bait. Well, with a when you're throwing overhead, overhead, over, overhand, 
uh, put about this much line, just about six or seven inches more, and you'll find it a little bit easier. It's all about the load up in the back and your release. But get out in the yard and practice. Make a couple of make one good long cast sidearm. Tape that reel down with some electrical tape. Reel back over the electrical tape, and then practice your overhead casts. That way, you'll know if you're going to get a backlash if you screw things up and stuff like that, and you don't screw it up so much you can't get it fixed. So, all right, guys. Well, I'm gonna let you go. It's been a little bit over an hour. I missed you. I'm so glad that uh, that you guys joined me tonight. I'm glad I was able to get back down, back on here. Uh, once again, say a prayer for Sam Tolley's uh, family. For you guys that are, got here late, Sam Tolley's the guy that used to donate. He was killed a week ago by a, DU, by a drunk driver. He was driving a motorcycle in Texas. Um, and, uh, and man, what a wonderful guy. Uh, the, in the short time I got to know him, that man was all about giving back. And, and he's one of those people that when he's the type of person I want to be like, if I ever come across enough money where I can give away everything extra, I'm going to give away everything extra. I'm going to do things for people. And that's what he was doing. And so in memory of him, you guys make sure you say a prayer for his family. But like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them, to, introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out on the water. Go out and catch some fish and have a great day. We'll see you.